Okay, in case you missed it, I started a new YouTube channel. It is called Sciencium. You can go uh, check it out by clicking on this card up here or a link in the description. Uh, there's already two videos over there about the Impemba effect, that is, does hot water actually freeze faster than cold water, and on the sun slowing down. Uh, now, ever since I've started this YouTube channel, I've been getting a lot of questions from people, mainly, why did you start a new channel? Uh, what's different about Sciencium compared to Veritasium? What's going to be on Veritasium now? Why can't you just put everything in one place? And so I wanted to address those questions in this video. Just think about the spinning wheel, the anti-gravity wheel video that I did. Uh, you might remember this majestic way that I lifted up this 40 pound wheel spinning at 3000 RPM over my head and made it look easy. But the thing is, that wasn't the first time I had done it. I had been working on this project, in fact, for the better part of a year. The first time I tried to build the apparatus was in Canada in the winter time and it was um, awful. I was spinning up this weight with a tire and it didn't work very well, it didn't get spinning fast enough, and as you can see, I was not able to lift it over my head. It was incredibly awkward when I tried to do that, but still I kept trying to work on it, um, and then when I got back to Sydney, I had the apparatus built again and I fixed a whole bunch of things, but even then the first time it didn't work, it wasn't spinning fast enough. <laughs> Oh, Did you get that? My point is that Veritasium videos take a very long time to make. That video took maybe a month of full-time work over, you know, a year. Um, and so it's very difficult to make regular videos. I mean, Veritasium has never had a format. It's always been a little bit random. Uh, and that means every video is a new battle for me. And that just takes a lot of time. It means that I can't do very many videos. So the first and main reason that I'm making Sciencium is because I wanna make videos that have a particular format to them. I want to make a channel that has a process, something where I know what step comes next and I can put out hopefully more videos and address more science topics. And that's something I really wanna do. And uh, I hope that you enjoy those videos too. And what I thought I'd do in this video is show you the process of making a Sciencium video, uh, show you a bit of behind the scenes, the kind of tools that I use to get this done. So where it all starts is with the script. And uh, the way I script is I, I actually like to uh, write all my scripts in like a presentation format as though I'm going to be presenting it because I find giving talks very natural. I, uh, I like doing it and it helps me to just to write it out in dot point and then I've got these conceptual chunks that I can move around. Uh, from there, once we have a good script, then I can go to shoot and where I shoot would be um, in this room right here uh, on this green screen. I really love these lights uh, because you can change the intensity of them. You can also set the color. I can dial it up from very much the color of tungsten. This is 2700 Kelvin through to very blue, more like daylight uh, 5600 uh, Kelvin. And then this is my key light. Um, it's got a diffuser on it, which makes it kind of a nice lighting for myself. So this will be too bright if I stand in front of it, but um, I don't know, we can darken that down. Uh, now, audio, as anyone who knows film will tell you, is very, very, very important, uh, maybe more important than the vision. And uh, I've been using these uh, Sennheiser wireless mics for a very long time. The actual mic that I'm using is interesting because it's not a clip-on. Uh, I have my mic right here, and it's actually like a vampire clip. So it's got these fangs on the back. And uh, so that just goes into my shirt. I like this because I can actually even wear this with a t-shirt and um, hide the mic completely. Uh, and now the camera. For the last few years, I've been using the Panasonic GH4. That is what is uh, shooting me right now. Uh, and the reason I picked this camera was because it was one of the first ones to come out at a reasonable price point that could record 4K internally. For those of you who don't know, 4K just means four times as many pixels as HD, which is 1920 by 1080. Um, now, some people might argue, well, that's overkill, especially considering I currently publish a lot of my stuff in 1080. Um, but the reason I shoot in 4K is because, let's say I shoot a single take here in front of the green screen uh, in 4K, when eventually I go to edit it, I can then decide whether I wanna uh, you know, zoom in for a close up at any point. I can just blow up the image without losing resolution because I'm exporting in 1080. But actually, um, I'm not gonna be using this camera for much longer because 
I have here a GH5. I bumped into like the right person at CES and they knew that I used a GH4 and they offered to send me a GH5 before they're available in stores. Uh, so I thought that was pretty awesome. There is the GH5 camera body. It looks pretty similar to the old GH4 body, but it is a little bit wider. Something I really liked about the GH4 screen was that you could flip it around so that you could face yourself. So when you're setting up a selfie shot, you know, uh, I think that's one of the key advantages. It's hard as a self-shooter to have a camera that doesn't have a, a screen that you can see. So uh, some of the things I'm excited about in this camera are that it can shoot 4K in 60 frames a second. That will allow me to shoot some slow motion even at the full resolution. At uh, full HD, the highest frame rate is 180 frames per second. There's also some interesting changes to the way they do compression and higher bit rate recording. So you can do 10 bit recording of video uh, and it's at 422. Color compression, what all that means is that the camera is actually recording more color information, which should lead to a nicer looking image at the, at the end and more stuff that you can do with it in post. I think that will allow me to shoot on a green screen uh, and key that green screen better than I have been able to do in the past. But that's something I want to experiment with and uh, find out whether it works. This is not a sponsored video, uh, but they did send me this camera, so I do appreciate that because they knew I was already using the GH4. I'm gonna set up my, for my first shoot here. Now I'm putting the teleprompter on. What I like about this small prompter is that uh, your eyes don't really need to move back and forth in order to see all the words. The bug is whipped through the air with a peak acceleration of around 12 Gs. Turn on mirror mode, and then it flips that around. So now I put it in here. All right. A frog's tongue can get prey into its mouth in less time than it takes for you to blink. Just seven hundredths of a second. So I finished the shoot and now it's time to import those files. For about five years, uh, I've been using Final Cut Pro to edit, even though I know most people are on Premiere. So I've started doing a bit of Premiere uh, lately. I still find Final Cut Pro is really quick and easy. So let me see here, key here. And it's gone. One of my key ideas for Scientium to make it quicker to make nice graphics for uh, is to hand draw all the graphics. Um, Henry Reich, who makes Minute Physics, actually recommended that I try an iPad Pro, and I found it to work pretty well. I'm using an app called uh, Procreate, and uh, what's really nice about that is it will, by default, record all of your strokes um, so that you can play it back as a video afterwards. <laughs> One thing is, like, I, I, I'm not a great artist, right? But, um, I don't know, they have, like, legs down here or something. And let's say they're sitting on some sort of lily pad. I actually find it really pleasing to draw on an iPad. I feel like I'm a better artist on an iPad, whether that's just my perception. And then you can just go here to time-lapse replay, and you can see the drawing come to life. And then if I want, I can export the video. I can now airdrop this directly to the iMac, and there we can have like the basics. So so to summarize, the reason I'm starting a new channel, Scientium, is because it's going to have a different format. All the videos will be scripted and presented in front of green screen and animated. Hopefully, uh, most of the animations will take place by hand. And there's a reason I haven't told anyone about yet why I wanted to make this new channel, which is I would like to work with uh, other YouTube creators, um, collaborators, experts. I know that a lot of you who watch my videos are experts in your own right, and I would love to make more videos about things that I don't even know about or haven't even heard about. So if you would like to help me make the videos on Scientium, I want to hear from you. I'm going to make a Google form, I will put it in the description, and uh, I am seeking collaborators, people who will be paid for working on the Scientium channel for helping me make more and better and cooler stuff. Um, so if you're interested in, say, writing or researching or drawing, animating, editing, I want to hear from you. And uh, you should complete the form uh, by clicking the link in the description. 
Um, also, I will be launching another forum, which is just for ideas. If anyone has ideas for topics to do on Veritasium or Scientium, you can submit those there. Um, so I'm really looking forward to working with other people. So uh, fill out those forms, and I look forward to working with you in the future.